So we feeling like it's gonna be alright until we go to the hospital and see that it ain't alright. He got tubes in him and it's like, when I walked in, I could just feel like he wasn't even there. And I fainted. Dude, did, did they give you a mic? Oh my god. This is not good. Oh my god. A hand it doesn't help? even matter. I don't really know how to, what to say about this one. If you're a fan of George, if, that's enough. If you're a fan of George Shanko, <laughs> you may want to skip this episode, bro. He's tucked into the corner. He's got a handheld mic. Well, let me, let me introduce it before we hear his qualms. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, back <laughs> welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. That is a fact. Why would I lie about something like that? Uh, anyway. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. We're here at VCon, still in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We've been banging out. I'll go again. We've been banging out podcasts. Uh, we got Liam Payne on. We got Beeple, Beeple. digital artist, one of the highest grossing artists of our generation. And today, legendary guest Snoop Dogg. He is uh, apparently one blunt away. One blunt away. Smoking right now. We're smoking or rolling? rolling. For us. Rolling. He's rolling? Yeah. Dude, it's... Is today going to be the day where I smoke with Snoop Dogg? Yeah, I think so. You did it with Mike Tyson, so I don't see why you don't do it with Snoop Dogg. He's a legendary did. smoker. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I smoked with Mike Tyson. Well, you did. So whether or not you remember it, maybe that's because you were high. Okay, what about, I, what about him? What, why'd you do that? You think I don't know how to control my own mic? I've been on the show for... For how long? As many episodes. You've been out of control have. for years. You oh, literally see, can't okay, control no, no. a mic. He said on this show. He said on this show. I don't, I don't like this, because now i got to turn to my left as well. And I do want to say this. There's could, always, you, could you vividly paint what I'm wearing so that way they know? He's wearing black and nice. gray. <laughs> I want to say this. There's always conversation about, I, I wanted to bring this up, about me and you bullying George. Yeah. Oh, show. this shows that that's not happening right no, now? No, 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 stop. I just want it to be well known. We're the victims. We are. He, he, we are. He, if you go back and you watch the episodes, <laughs> you will see clearly who makes all of the, the demeaning. It's him. Who? It's George. Who are you pointing at? They can't see <laughs> How did you end up over there? I don't fucking know, bro. This is Snoop Dogg. No, but I like I'm going to be one day when I'm like, hey, remember we did a podcast? He's like, who are you? I was like, all right, bet. <laughs> you, no, I was going to share a J with him, but by the time it passes over here, it'll kind of go out. I'll have to ask him for a lighter. And that by the time it gets over here, the podcast is over. Why, why, why is he over here? It's because we have six people on the show today. So Snoop Dogg will be joined by his son. Cordell, who uh, we call him Champ today. Yeah. And then Nick He's Adler, his business partner. And so six people on one podcast. We said absolutely not. We're not doing six people. We we want Snoop Dogg, but his son Champ and Nick are gonna add a lot of value to the podcast. So we were supposed to do another show with uh, with with Banks as well. Uh, w w w once again, Banks completely fucked us. He he didn't show up for his show. By the way, he didn't even do his VCon speech. He told me he hadn't slept before the trip. He's very sad and very apology. I just want you to know that. I, I got to cover up for him a little he, bit. Well, he texted me, and also he, he, he apologized. But to be honest with you, it worked out, man. I was exhausted I after the Liam show. But how, I mean, at what point do we get that fucking episode done? Thanks. Yeah. We've been trying for some time now. You know, it's, it'll happen when, when, when it's right. Yesterday was, right. yesterday was not right. Right. Um, yeah. Should we paint a... Can, can, can you see out there to that? Can you pan to that? I just want to say you're going to hear random applause throughout the course of this episode because we're literally coinciding with uh, Gary V is on the stage right now talking talking about making TikToks <laughs> on the stage. So people are just going to be clapping at random times, like mid-sentence the whole show. But um, Minneapolis, yep. thoughts, feelings? I, I've been having a great time. I think the clubs are fun. I think the food is wet. Like, I think the food is a bit more wet than, like than your average dish. I don't know what it is. That it seems to be, like, like moist. Moister, yeah. It's moister than most areas. The water is slippery. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys have been... Mm -hmm. in, our, in our hotel, and don't give me that look, because in our hotel, I, I thought, like, the, the body gel, the body wash was hard to get off and I, I was scrubbed my body for like 10 minutes and I realized the, it's the water yeah the water is a more, slippery a more slippery water I think I think it's the it's at a molecular molecular what? level maybe I'm glad I wasn't on this podcast <laughs> 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 yeah, we suck dude uh, okay so off to things that you guys want to hear about NFTs <laughs> I'm just fucking kidding. Could you stop. pan to the dorks out there with drawings of <laughs> NFTs? Please, Dude, bro. Stop, please, bro. Please, for the love of God. Stop. Security guard, if anybody comes and talks about NFTs, kill them. Immediately cut their heads he off. He heard you. He's, <laughs> he's laughing. He heard you and agreed. He's laughing, bro. He's like, that's all good as long as I can get a picture with him. No, no, it, it is a nerd conference. But we're, we're, I'm a part of it. You know, I'm a, I'm a nerd. So no, I get it. 
How dare you? Uh, speaking of no nerds, our boy Caleb and Dylan were uh, up to bat for the hottest girl in the club last I night. I saw that. So cool. That was so cool. And uh, both of them. <laughs> Did Dylan, either of them? Uh, no, so I got to the bottom of it. Uh, Dylan got her number and went home with her, but didn't close. Didn't close. I think she, she actually met him at a strip club and then vanished. Didn't even say goodbye. Oh. That seems a little bit more... On brand. Uh, <laughs> on brand. <laughs> it's very on brand for you, Dylan. <laughs> I, will, I will say this. It's also a lot easier for them to be cleaning up the, the ultra hotties, seeing as how me and Logan are, are bagged up now. Oh, shut up. Mike, you know, it, 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 it makes me look really good sitting next to you. So <laughs> uh, let me just translate. It's because me and him are bagging these hoes in the fucking club. <laughs> They could have our scraps because we're fucking <laughs> I here. The opposite. I have my beautiful Asian woman that you can whoa, see on my Instagram whoa, that whoa. sucks a lollipop. And, whoa. And again, uh, now you've crossed the line. No, 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 stop. Don't. I, I dare you. No, Yo, I just because she's here, I'm going to cut my stop, mouth shut. Stop. She's not here. She left. Okay, anyways. So then. <laughs> uh, uh, Amber, Amber Heard is trending on Twitter right now. Um, somehow there are still people who are taking her side. Well, hold on and, a second. A hold, on a second. hold on a second. One, I don't care. <laughs> Two, I think Snoop D O Double G is about to come on. Oh and shit! I'm gonna be honest with you. A conversation with Snoop excites me much more than Mrs. Doodoo Head. Dude, Mrs. Doodoo Bed. <laughs> just, just Mrs. Doodoo Bed. Listen, just real quick. This is what I was gonna ask yesterday on the Liam show, but I didn't find an opening. Do you think the, do you think, do you think the the, the pooping on the bed was premeditated? Was she like, I'm. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shit on his bed. That that'll teach never, him. Or was it or crime cr sure. crime of passion? Right? He pissed her off, and she's like, "That's it." I would say the latter. Like, I can't <laughs> I can't imagine that she had that planned out. Like that was a spontaneous yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, out of all the things I could do right now, I could t take some jewelry, bash a, uh, a car window in, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna spice you know this. Up. Say, I'm gonna shit on Johnny. You know how Depp's they say bed. like the truth is stranger than fiction. It's like when you plan stuff, it's never as good as when you just f do something crazy, bro. You know what you, I'm saying? Like, like, you don't think she sat down nah, at a table, had schematics, nah. was like a step one squat on the bed. No, the, like, even before as that, wall. eat Taco like, Bell at 6 p.m. <laughs> like, really, like, <laughs> planned it out, <laughs> strategized. I would pay all my money in the world to just be there moments before she decided to do it. <laughs> Like she's like, you know what fucking she's on the phone with them. Yeah, you just wait till you you know fuck just where's this bed? <laughs> just shits on it. She was that and imagine that, him right. walking in on that. Cause she's probably gone. She's not at the like the, the scene of the crime. Inexplicable. It's well done. It's one of those things again, I just I'm not sure if there's any coming back from. Would that be strike two? <laughs> George, <laughs> why are you trending right now? Me? Uh, wow, I, I'm going through some. Oh, you know why? You know why? You know why? This is actually funny because Floyd Mayweather just fought some <laughs> random guy. Not, it's like semi-random. Used to be a sparring partner. He whooped his ass, and so like again, it's just it's just I always look back and I'm like, damn, he couldn't even beat up a YouTuber. Did he pay you yet? We're working on it. I don't know if that's why you're why you're trending. <laughs> Oh, because I look like Tommy Innit. Tommy Innit. Because Tommy Innit has a brand new beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, dude? Snoop. <laughs> Snoop D O Double G. How you doing, bro? Is on set. You get your drink? Yes, sir. Damn. Drink. Prime. Drink prime, baby. Hey, uh, it's actually bomb when you're high. You know I'm high as a mother. That's good. That's right. That's what I like to hear. Yes. I like the outfit. Yes. You, I like yeah, the fit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is fantastic. <laughs> this, this, talk to me. Here, here, here. I sent my first dick pic with that. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> that Polaroid camera right there is the recipient of my first dick pic. <laughs> what year? What year? I think it was 1982. Can I, I ask? got one and I sent a bitch a picture of my dick on a Polaroid. <laughs> what was the method? What, how did you send it? With, uh, via Fax mail? <laughs> no, I dropped it off. And <laughs> Ah, dropping dick off. I dropped it off in her third period class. She was talking shit about me, telling me, you got a little bitty one. I said, oh, okay, no. I got something for you. Give me that, give me that Polaroid. <laughs> third period. I got your ass. This is great. All right, so all right, let's let's talk about let's talk about this. What's going Man, on right this now? Shit, good as a motherfucker. Is this water? Hey. Let's go. That's what's up. That's prime, baby. He came with the blueberry. He knew what he was doing. He yeah. ain't playing no games. That's our best seller. I can tell. Target, Walmart, CVS. 
Kroger Vitamin Shop. Right. And now Snoop Dogg needs some shipped to the conference. Let's go. That way you could ask your we'll get your address. We'll, we'll hook you guys up. Lifetime Supply. You want to do some intros? Yeah, here we go. Maybe. Guys, uh, uh, it is true. We're uh, in v -Con, at VCon Minneapolis. We have Snoop D-O-double-G on the Jeez. podcast right now. Got his son, Champ, next to him to his right. And to his right, to Champ's right, <laughs> Nick Adler, Snoop's business partner. You guys are a team, uh, a family, I'm sure, at this point, And uh, we're all here. Thanks for coming on. Impulsive, number one podcast in the world. That's a fact. You better know it. it. We know what we at. We we with the number ones, not the twos. I appreciate you, yeah. bro. I, I appreciate you. you, dude. We go, we go, we go back a little bit. We have history because yeah. because yeah. you've been fucking with Jake for some time Come on now. now. You know I fuck with your bro, bro. I've been oh, betting man. on him, been rocking with him. You understand me? I've been going against the grain, fucking with Jake. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> fuck <laughs> y'all. I'm with my nephew. Shout out to Jake. Got his gloves in my GGM room no right way. now. No yeah. way. Show sure enough, dude. That's so cool. When you were uh, commentating his fight against against Ben Askren. Yo, that was the best. We got to get you back commentating, man. People love it. Come on, man. I felt like me and him was like Cosell and Ali. Like we was a tandem. We should stay <laughs> yeah. together. You understand me? So, you know, let me know when y'all want to do it again. That's the shit I do. Dude, for real. For real. You have to. He's fighting uh, He's fighting in August. I heard. Yeah. I heard. I'm, I'm with him. So, you know, I'm betting on him. Sick. He probably made you a lot of money at this point. Boy, huh? I love me some Paul, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dude, you guys are all collectively very also good at making money. I can't believe how how nuanced your business st strategy is. Like even just the These fact guys, that you're here. It's Nick and Cordell. So, so from what I understand, Cordell, you're the NFT crypto kind of blockchain wing of right. the enterprise. Nick and I, champ, champ. It's champ and Nick Allen running all the Snoop bet, NFTs. Bet, bet, and you're killing it, dude. I saw the deal you did with Sandbox. Mm. Correct. Oh yeah, that's correct. right. Yeah. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Oh, that was goodness. Nick. Nick led that one. I, I mean, was. We, you know, we just been. Like, we got a feel for the space, and you know, when we when we get the right vibe, Sandbox is one of them. Gala yeah. Games. Yeah. You know, Crypto.com. We we just keep finding the right partners and, and building. It's it's interesting because, actually, that's where we thrive too. Um, when we find the right partner, even just on this podcast, like this podca podcast, I bet will do numbers because when we have the right partner, right amplifier. Shit goes, shit goes yeah, crazy. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you have, a, I was going to ask you, you have a really interesting uh, brand because, bro, you've been relevant forever. Forever. And, and oh, this is, this it is sound like they, It sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> the timing of that is always perfect. Guys, we have Snoop Dogg. <laughs> My people just won't stop. Calm down, y'all. He's trying to ask me a question. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Oh, they got music yo, now. Yo. Who is it? Who? There's no way they just start blasting music right They're now. playing doggy style yeah. right now. Recording, it doesn't pick it up. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it doesn't pick it up. It's just still so loud. No, they got it. They feel like ambiance, like we yeah. had a motherfucking rock concert. We need that. 100%. We need that. So, look, you, you have been relevant forever, man. That's so hard, and you've seen it all. You've, you're, like, generationally famous. And it allows you now, if you're smart enough to make these really cool strategic business plays, right? Like the sandbox thing was incredible. You just bought Death Row Records, which I mean, congratulations. I'm sure wow. we, we want to get into thank like, you. thank you. Yeah, bro. Like, I'm 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 proud of you. I'm glad to have sure. you in the in the fam by default. Tell Gary to turn that shit off. Tell <laughs> Gary to turn that shit. We got fucking Snoop Dogg on the show right now. It's all right. Snoop Dogg love talking over music. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's when my voice is most affected. <laughs> Nah, but also real shit strategically, um, it's all it's all about having faith in your team. Yeah. You know, you can't yeah. be you can't be a boss and not have bosses around you. Yeah. You can't just have a bunch of workers. You gotta have bosses, people that think like bosses, so that way when it's time to make decisions, they help you make decisions. If I had a bunch of people that were just yes men around me, I wouldn't be shit. These guys, they challenge me, they go find <laughs> different shit, they bring new and innovating ideas to the table and I'm courageous enough to listen to him. I'm courageous enough to learn it and to figure it out. And now that we didn't figure this shit out, it's like it's a blessing to be able to have your family and your friend that you, you know, really enjoy doing business with, yeah. you know, conquer a new venture. And Logan, we we tell him no more than we tell him yes. Like we oh, turning really? down oh, more, really? We turning down more money than we make it. Cause so so many people hit me and be like, Hey Snoop, I got this NFT play, I got this, this, that for and sure. I'd be like, Okay, let me run it past Whoop de wop. Yeah, for sure. And then they'd be like, man, that shit was worth all this money. And then they'd be like, nope, that shit ain't gonna work. It ain't right. Yeah. And I'd be like, I gotta go with them. I'm not gonna go behind their back and do a deal that ain't gonna work. Then I'm gonna look stupid. Everything that they've told me to move on or not move on has been, you know, what it's supposed to be. So you guys have a good intuition with the space. Because you've been you've been right a lot more than you've been wrong, you know? Have, have you had any, like, any oh, moves? we've been wrong a few times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't post our losses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's Nobody about, does. Our profession. Yeah, this see, in boxing, you have to. But in this shit, yeah. 
<laughs> your losses don't have to be, you know, glamorized. Yeah. You know, you just nah. take your L on the chin and keep it moving. Yeah. Right? Look, man, you, you guys have been pioneering in Web3. Like, Web3 to us is, it's still so new. We're all so early, right? We fell down a bunch. Like, what I've learned the most about this, this crypto side is like you're not going to do it right yeah and people are going to be upset it's about their money it's about their nfts yeah. and about this and that but if you just show them you're here for the long term you show them you're here for the community yeah you know it took us about three drops some twitter dialogue some uh. cosimo medici's and before you knew it the crowd they changed and now it's about you know keeping them elevated and lifted in, in, in the beginning i was robotic i was very robotic meaning that i didn't know the space so everything was told by me yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. you should say this shit, and i didn't know shit. but once i got involved and actually got hands-on then i can accompany them with conversation and understanding in the community and i learned to be a part of the community because that's just how i am i'm hands-on which made our relationship with the community even bigger and better 100 and it was important for us to make sure he knew the space because like we could do our thing, but like when he come in on some creative shit, yeah. it's all the way elevated. And when he's in the room yeah. starting a conversation and he knows what a rug pull means, he knows, you know, decentralized, he know all these yeah, yeah. words that they saying in these meetings, it make our value more, you know, For sure. high. For it's sure. like we stronger as a team. For sure. For, so is that why you're here? I mean, I mean, I'm Gary Vee's obviously a force to be reckoned with, but the fact that he got you to come to Minneapolis. I want to go by Prince House anywhere. I want to go. Oh, did you, I went. Did you go? Hey, I did. I did. That motherfucker. I ain't never. Whoa, I ain't never crazy. been. I, I ain't went. Never been. I, I went before him. Was it massive? Man, I think it's like a hundred thousand square foot. Dig if you will, my picture. <laughs> you and I bad, engaged boy. in a kiss. He bad. The sweat of your body I covers me. <laughs> Candy fixture. Nah, Prince was Candy an innovator. Picture. And he was, if Prince was alive <laughs> right now, he'll be doing <laughs> NFTs. Like, you think so? I know so. Because, like, how he moved. If he, he was, was here doing, now, he'd cuss all you niggas out for being in this motherfucking house. 100%. <laughs> That's what one thing's for certain and two things for sure. Get the fuck out my yeah. house. <laughs> Whenever I hear his name, I always think of the Dave Chappelle skit. The exactly. Chappelle skit. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball. And he got a basketball court in his house, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so I swear funny. to God. How you guys feel about the current state of the, uh, like this this dip that we're seeing right I now? I love it. I love the dip because I'm a fighter. Yeah. I fight better when I'm down. I fight back better when I got to oh, come look, back it's, up it's again. It's the man running the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Gary. 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 Bring your hot ass on. Come on. He does this thing he where he, he does hurdles. There. Watch. He can sit on the, on the Watch. He'll hurdle. He'll hurdle. Hey. Gary, Gary turn the music down. I ain't big. Yeah. You can split seats with me, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going over there. Yeah. There you go. Come on, bro. The G. The G. Yeah, Get it in. I've seen him hurdle so much shit oh, this so week. Good. Oh, uh, you. good to see you, baby. Good What's up, brother? Good to see you, baby. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a you know what this shit is for I'm me? This shit is like I never went to college and I always wanted oh, to be in a fraternity. I always wanted to be with some, yeah. some cool dudes. This shit is like that moment for me. Hell like yeah. all we need now is some fucking beer. Let's get fucking hell yeah. Get fucking <laughs> yeah. wasted. Come on, man. I Fuck. Love your Let's do some fucking keg stands. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some shit. I always want. I wanted to be in Animal House as a kid. I'm sorry. Great film. You're in it right I now. love that movie. <laughs> Dude, good to see you. Good to see you. Killing this event. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Honestly, I want you guys to do your thing. We did our thing. By the way, this is the only thing I want to say. One, I want to say I fucking love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Dude, we're best friends now. That was a good <laughs> Two, thank you so much for being here. Love you, Chant, Nick. And three, for the community. I read every fucking comment of our show the other day. Like, in every platform. It just was very nice words. A lot of people got a lot of value. That's because of you three, so I wanted to be on. I just want to say big shout out to that, your whole community, bunch of good kids, girls, boys, different ages. Just huge shout out to all of you guys. Keep being thoughtful. I, like the responses were thoughtful. They picked up on a lot of smart shit. Just a very smart little community. It's a big community, but like, Damn. it was thoughtful. <laughs> it was fucking thoughtful. Yeah. That means you guys are doing wow. good shit. Keep going. I'm cheering for this podcast. I'm cheering for these three. I'm out. I mean, you guys Thanks, should bro. be Look, look, look what Web3 so brought to you. Web3 is bringing us all 100%. together. It's crazy. Yep, sir, like, 100%. this is all because of that. Gotta love Legend. it. Community. Love yeah, community. Gary, yeah, have, uh, have him turn the volume down. <laughs> I got a gift. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> Internet, I need that. Kids, Gary, dog. sweet words. Can we turn it down a little bit, the music? <laughs> oh, that? Yeah. They can. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gary Stacks motherfucking V in the house, y'all. D O double G V Con. Live fuck? and direct. You better know it. Hello. <laughs> it's a Super Bowl. Yo, so 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 the homie Kifa was the one that yep. brought yeah, us close. Yep. Come on, man. Cousin that's Kifa. My, that's my guy. Come on, man. We connected. The West, we all together. We all we got, man. When people put the uh, bat signal in the air and say, hey, look. We try to get you on the podcast with my family. You ain't even got to ask twice. We'll, we'll be there. We'll do it. We'll walk down the hall. We'll bring a few blunts and we'll talk about it. Kiefer's West Coast royalty, right? That's my you nephew, know that. Man. Yeah, Putting yeah. his work in, man. You know, that's one thing about us. We empower each other on the West. We right. love to see when somebody getting it and we praise them and we push them and we give them their flowers. So shout out to my nephew Kiefer for making this happen. What you yeah. think about the, the current scene of uh, LA hip hop? You, you following Roddy and everything that's going on in LA? You I proud love, of LA I right now? I love it. I love it. I get a chance to stand back and watch the youngsters do what they do. I mean, I did my thing with it for, you know, 20 some years as far as being the king of the West Coast. Gave the crown to Kendrick Lamar. I didn't give it to him. I actually, he took it. But I had to take it <laughs> off my head and give it to him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he been running wild with it. And the music that's been coming out from the West has been very, very good. It's, it's, it's international. It's not just regional. It's not local no more. It's global. So, you know, when I go across the world and I hear music from the West Coast, that makes me feel good to know that it's constantly growing and it's constantly being affected. You get a chance to listen to Kendrick's new album? Fucking love it. Crazy, right? Crazy. Crazy. A, a Crazy. Literally a piece of Masterpiece. Art. Masterpiece, bro. Well thought out. You know, when you take your time like that, that's what you get. You notice he don't come out every blue yeah, moon. He yeah, come out yeah. when he get ready and he makes sure he's calculated with his thought process, his visuals, his sound. Like Kendrick is the kind of artist that is a part of the production. He's not, you can't send him a beat. You can't just send him a beat and say, I want to be on your album. He has to be in there with you, telling you how to make the music go, <laughs> changing notes, where it's stopping, where it's breaking. Like he's a part of the process, the full process. He's a genius. Yes, sir. He's a genius. So you just bought Death Row. I got to tell you, Doggy Style, was the first album. I'm older than these two. Doggy Style was the first album I ever bought. First album I ever bought in my no whole way. life. And I was never right after that. Man. I was fucked I'm up so after that. I'm so glad you're wrong. Because yeah. see, if loving you was wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> now, Doggy Style was, was the pinnacle for me too because it was a chance for me to come up under, uh, up under Dr. Dre's wing and stand on my own two feet. And this was my first project and I had never done it before. So it was, a little bit of nerve, but it was more about, I want to be the dopest. I want to fuck everybody up, but then I want to take something from everybody that I love and instill it in my project. That's why I had a remake to Lottie Dottie on Doggy Style because Slick Rick was a great influence to me. Yeah, yeah. That's why I had old school, you know, R&B musicians like the Dramatics and the production I chose and just the, the tone of the record that was real pimping and was laid back because that's who I was and that's the story I was telling. LeBron put it in his top five albums the other day on, yep. twi on Twitter. He put I believe. the Chronic too, yeah. and, and he yeah. wrote the Chronic. Yep. all of the Chronic. So you were on two, two had two of them. Yeah, what's it feel like to to continue that many years later to get respect from from people across multiple verticals, the best in the world? I mean, that's a beautiful feeling, man, to get that respect from people who you respect, and you know, knowing that all of the people that put in that hard work on working on those projects, all of the writers, all of the producers, and the people that was just there giving us that energy. You know, I know that feels good for all of us, not just me, but all of us to know that somebody as great as LeBron James looks at our work as something that he could say is top five, because I look at him as top five basketball, so. Yeah. What, what, what number? Sure. What number? He in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> He's PR I was all I was trying to do was get one answer. <laughs> just one answer. He got two numbers in the top five, number six and 23. I'm okay, saying. he gave me two out, we're going to give him two numbers. <laughs> so Death Row, an institution of, of hip hop, you know, history, West Coast, I mean, global. Death Row, everybody knows Death Row. You just bought it back. Who, who owned it at the time? It, it went through, it changed uh, ownership it from, a lot, right? E1 to Hasbro to Blackstone to Snoop Dogg. <sighs> What's that feel like to bring it back home? You know what? I did so much crying and complaining about my masters, and Cordell could tell you. <laughs> I used to cry like a motherfucker about my masters. Fuck that shit, I want my masters. And he used to be like, man, fuck that, Pops. All you gotta do is just do your shit over like Taylor Swift. Just redo your shit. And I'm like, I don't want to because it's a feeling. It's like it's something about that record. You can't redo it. And when I finally got it back, I still haven't cried. I still haven't like really felt the moment of I got my shit back because I've been taking care of everybody else. I ain't been focused on doggy style. I've been trying to make sure that all of the people that was a part of the process getting their shit right, making sure they getting paid, setting up shows, you know, branding the, the label, getting the merchandise right, getting it in different, you know, scenarios, movies, TV shows, to make it lovable, to make Death Row what it was supposed to be, friendly. You know, when you think of Death Row, you're supposed to think about great music and 
Not getting it's your not ass beat. It's not the first beat. thing I think of is not friendly. You think about getting your ass beat. Yeah, I want to remove that getting your ass beat. Yeah. That's up to him and his brother to do, handle yeah. that department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think Shug thinks about it? You, do you ever talk to Shug at all? Nah, but I, not, I, right? I spoke to him maybe about a year and a half ago. We had a great conversation, but it wasn't nothing about me buying death row. Nothing. That wasn't even in the equation. We was just getting caught up on, you know, life and, you know, how much love we got for each other and how we've outgrown the negativity or whatnot. So. I think I think he would be proud. I think he would be happy because he knows I'm a great businessman, and then I'm also a part of the creation of Death Row. And it's not like I stole it; I bought it. So I had to go do something to create some sort of finances to actually purchase this. So with respect, you know, it's been sold many times. So to actually have it sold back to somebody that he believed in makes makes more sense than anything. For sure. What's next for uh, for Death Row? Death Row Films, Death Row sick, Kids, sick, uh, sick. G Funk Lullabies, Death Row merchandise um web three web three yeah, we, we already in the yeah. metaverse with death row we the first major label to be in the metaverse we did how many ETHs did we do you know the number we did a thousand ETH in one month did 269 singles um wow. and, and and really grew a community of five thousand people in like 30 days Sick. M music nfts yeah. all music all NFTs. and we have an exclusive relationship with gala games and gala music where some of this death row music will be for sale we'll be selling certain Sick. songs off of these albums that you can actually own monetize and do what you want to do with sick dude I, I i have so much uh love for people who who do a lot and you guys do a lot you know um you started off your career a certain way and then i mean i don't know if you've seen like the memes on twitter but they're saying you're you're on your side quest <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, you're doing everything yeah. you're doing and they got <laughs> shit of me and i did a commercial in russia nigga, when i came out of motherfucking refrigerator they got commercials of me in Australia where I'm promoting like the Uber Eats over there. Like, <laughs> no way. It ain't, so, it, ain't sh it ain't much I don't do, dog, because I look at it like this. If it's fun and it makes funds, let's have a little fun. Yeah. I w you know, I'll add to that. Like, he's, his career, I think ultimately, like, there's one Snoop Dogg, but the way he's collaborated with brands has helped elevate his career. And at a time when he, when he started doing it and when, you know, started working with him on it, he... You know, people would ask us, man, you guys do too much. Why are you doing this? Why yeah. are you doing that? And, you know, he saw that it was it was about getting exposure in the world. And, you know, he, he's like a media brand. You know, there's there's more than just there's more than just Snoop the person yeah. or Snoop the persona. For right sure. now, Not a lot I'm, of people I'm have chasing, that. I'm chasing Shaquille O'Neal right now. Shaq. Yeah. Yep. Shaq got <clears throat> so many motherfucking commercials and businesses. And this is my friend. And when I say I'm chasing him, that's for the right reasons. Yeah. Not nothing negative or hate. It's just I'm inspired by it. I love how he took his basketball career, put yep. it on pause, and took his business hand. And you forget he was a basketball player based off of how business-minded he yep. became. Yep. You know, an, an, another reinvention of Magic Johnson, you know, to take your skills outside of the basketball court and create businesses. I want to take my skills outside of the microphone, outside of the mic booth, outside of the studio, into a business. And that's what I've been able to do. And you should be able to. You should be able to do what you're great at. Why do you think that you and Shaq have been so successful doing it, branching out, where some of your peers have not? Because you have you're, you're sitting in a certain spot because of you know your personality, your interests, and things you're you're good at, where you're allowed, you're able, you're able to. But I think we studied. I think me and Shaq both studied. We both come from that same era of studying the great ones. Hmm. You know, we studied the ones before us, whether when it was our profession as far as sports and music, mm. we studied the great ones and became great ones. And then once we got out of that, we studied the business great ones mm. and we wanted to become great ones in that. And then we looked at, hold on, we have a lot of personality. Some guys don't know how to market themselves For or sure. brand themselves or don't know how to utilize the ability of being a superstar 24 seven. Like yeah. when their season is over with, their season is over with. When your season is over with, my season is just beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're I right. Would, I would say you're more out there now than I've ever seen you in my whole I mean he, you're right he's everywhere right now you know on like, regular TV and shit you see me on commercials Corona everywhere like Bill you see me in it you see driving me driving around LA billboards like a, a, everywhere <laughs> everywhere and I he's selling you, wine in the grocery store crazy how do you set guardrails like I, in the in the web 3 space it's a little easier a in the web easier. in the web 3 space I let them right but in the traditional that's me like what are you saying no to these days a little bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the craziest deal you think you've done? Can you, anything you pop to mind? I know the cra one of the craziest deals I turned down, it was like $2 million to DJ for, I think it was a Michael Jordan event, and I turned it down. And I never met Michael Jordan. And you I still never met never, Michael? And I want to meet him. Well, if you don't mind me asking, why would you turn that down? 
because I was doing some other shit. I had shit to do when I had way more customers before I get to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I never met Michael Jordan. I, I want to meet him, and I want to meet him on a different... I don't want to meet him on no... I'm out there DJing. I want to, like, meet him oh, as boss a fan. The boss. Yeah, yeah, as a fan, yeah. as a boss. It's like, Mike, I love you since North Carolina. I'm a big fan of yours. I love what you do. You're one of the greatest to ever do it. Give me a couple of secrets on how you did this. Can I get a picture with you? You want to smoke a blunt? Hey man, it's been real. You look That's up, crazy. You look up That's to Mike crazy. a lot. Yes. Why? How couldn't I? I'm a black man. I mean, he was business, everything. Everything. I watched him at North Carolina as a freshman, do his thing and beat Georgetown. I was a Georgetown fan back then. Dog pound, Georgetown Hoyas. So he hit my team. <laughs> so I had to fall in love with him because he hit my team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then the next year, I seen him win the Player of the Year. Then I seen him do his thing with the Bulls, and he hit 63 on a bird and. Broke his ankle and came. I'm like, this motherfucker's different. And then his first championship came through us. He had to beat the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. So just think about what I just told you. Yeah. He hit the Georgetown Hoyas, which was my team. <laughs> he hit the Lakers, which was my team. So it's respect. You know, you earn respect through through competition, I think. And you can you can honor that. For as sure. far as if you box somebody, you may talk shit about him, and then once y'all finish boxing, you like this motherfucker can really for fight. For sure, for sure. Y'all end up <laughs> hugging and shaking, yeah, like you yeah, know what you yeah. you a bad motherfucker. Yeah. I respect you, absolutely, dog. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what it was with Michael Jordan, because I'm a Magic Johnson fan. Magic is one. Jordan is two. Well, so I was gonna say, so maybe this is why you didn't answer the what number is LeBron? Yeah, because <laughs> because <laughs> Magic Magic is one. Gotcha. Magic is one. Yeah, I can respect. Jordan that. is two. Is Bird two. in your top five or no? He in the top ten. Okay. Clutch, Mr. Clutch. Man, I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, if you like, if Jordan, I hate yeah. you, that means I love you. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, it, being such a, a fan and looking at Michael like that, does it ever scare you? I've met a lot of people who uh, looked at Kobe like that, or I've met people that have looked looked at Pac like that. Does it ever scare you the idea of not being able to uh, give those flowers to someone you look up to before? Like, like, do you want to try to make that happen? I'm going to make it happen because yeah. y'all podcast going to go across the whole globe and he's going to see it and hear about I think, it. I think I, Michael Jordan actually watches this podcast. Yeah. I know he do. What up, Mike? <laughs> what up, Mike? How you doing? No, but um, speaking to the to the flower thing about Kobe Bryant, and that, just because you brought that up, I was able to give him his flowers. I had Kobe, after he retired, come over to my compound and I gave him a lowrider card that I had made for him. And he came and he spent time with my family and my friends and he gave my son some great information on business and life which I see him, you know, putting into effect now. Sick. So that was a treasured moment that I had, that I had him fly to come see me wow. and me give him his flowers and him to take the car home and they still have the car to this day. You so cool. Wow. I, I, gotta, I gotta ask Champ, what, what did you talk to Kobe Bryant about? Man, it was crazy because we talked about kids and I didn't even have kids at the time and like, what he told me was like, you gotta raise your daughter like, you know, she either the lion or the, she the gazelle. And either way, you gonna love her. And like, I'm raising my daughter that same way and she's so tough, she's so strong. Like, you know, she be motivating me. She be like, daddy, you got this. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's that's love. And I always think about Kobe and his daughter, you know? Um, and then also he told me some books to read on business and, and just, you know, finding who I am as a person. Mm. And I implement that every day. So cool. But I'm just wow. tripping off of how he was talking to him about his daughter. And, and the way he left us. Yeah. You get what I mean? So it's like he knew his purpose. Mm. His purpose was to be a girl dad. Yep. And to translate his you know, life into that. Mm. Which inspired him, me, us, mm -hmm. and all of us to be better fathers to our daughters. Yep. Wow. West Coast has had some tough losses. I mean, Kobe, Pac, Nipsey. Mm. Is there anyone particularly that, that stands out to you as kind of the hardest one of those to swallow? I'd probably say shit, Nipsey and Nate Dog. Oh, Nate Dog too, yeah. Yeah, yeah just because the, it just it just felt like they had so much to do. Yeah. You know, same with Pac as well. I feel like he didn't even get a chance to finish. He died at 25. And I'm 25, so like that's crazy. That's insane, man. That's that's insane. When I found out that uh, the Tupac and Biggie stuff happened, when they were, I, I, Biggie was what 24, 24, 24, 24 yeah. 25. Man, that's so young. And I was 25. That's we all we all the man. same. I'm one year older than Biggie, but me and Pac the same age. So I, you thinking about to, that? Go ahead. I'm so sorry. My mic is 
He's usually all. He's usually on this side. Oh, they took your seat. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> by the they way, they got work in the hand. Hey, fuck it. I like your team effort, though. You playing team ball right now? Fuck, I come off the bench. Fuck it. Long as I get, long as I get in the game, bro. Fuck all that playing. We love you, George. Give me the ball. Give me the motherfucking uh, ball. Y'all had, y'all had the ball too long. Get a ball to Joy. Run this shit, Joy. I, just, I had, to, I had to jump in on this moment because I didn't want to bring up that situation because it was tough. But like, if we're on that subject, where were you and how did you find out when it happened? I just flew back from New York. Actually, all of us had just flew back from New York. Shug, Pac, myself, and a couple others. They went to Vegas, I went to um, Warren G's. Cause we had like a minor misunderstanding because that was at the time where I had spoke in New York about not having issues with Puffy and Biggie. Mm -hmm. And that rubbed Pac the wrong way. Mm. And me and him wasn't seeing eye to eye. So, Basically, they didn't want me to go to Vegas for them, and I didn't want to go to Vegas because the vibe wasn't right. So I went to Warren G's house, and then later, the next day, we getting paid. That's when we had pages. We getting blown up on the pages. Nine one nine one one one, and it should. And he telling us that him and Pac got shot, and get on out to Vegas. And we get out there, and when we get with Suge, he's not telling us the severity of it. He's telling us like, cause he's he got shot in the head, but he's sitting up here talking to us. And he like. Yeah, his, he got grace and he got How, no way. What is yes. this man built out of? Well, and he had already been through it once at that point and survived the first. No, the, this is I'm talking about Suge. While, yeah. while, yeah, yeah. while we drive to Vegas to see Pac, we we go to Suge's house yep. first. Yep. Yeah. So we haven't even seen Pac. Yep. We just talking to Suge and he got the head wrapped up and he oh telling us God. what happened and you know Pac gonna be alright. He gonna pull through. You know he got shot nine times before. He gonna be alright. He gonna they hit me in the head. So we feeling like it's gonna be all right until we go to the hospital and see that it ain't all right. He got tubes in him and it's like, when I walked in, I could just feel like he wasn't even there. And I fainted. Then his mother, you know, got me up and walked me in the bathroom and had a conversation with me about being strong. She was like, my baby ain't never seen you weak. I don't want, I don't want you to be weak in front of him. You go in the bathroom and fix yourself up and you go back in here and you talk to him and you tell him how you feel. My baby loves you. Cause she knew it was a little tension, but she knew how much we loved each other. So she gave us a moment for me to say some things to him as far as how much I love him. But I knew that that was going to be my last time speaking with him. Damn. That's so sad, man. Uh, it kind of just <clears throat> goes back to what I was saying before about, you know, being able to voice yourself to people, you know, and, and make sure that what you what you have to say to them is said because you really just never know. My, that's crazy. That's, that's, that was the crazy part about that is, like, that's the only relationship that I have like that where someone left and we wasn't all right like we should have been. Yeah. And I feel like it's because the decision that I made to live, I wanted to live. Mm. At that particular time of our life, we made decisions on what we want to live or we want to die. Listen to our music. Listen to the music that we wrote. What was Biggie's second album called? Ready to Die? Or uh, what was Life After Death, right? Exactly. Yeah. What was Tupac's last album? Machiavelli. Machiavelli. And what is Machiavelli yeah. about? Death. Okay, then. What was Snoop Dogg's second album? The life. Dog, the dog yeah. Father, about yeah, life, life, doggy land. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having kids mm -hmm. and, yeah. you, you know, I'm, transforming I'm, yeah. into a full-grown man because I had a son, his brother. Tupac didn't have no kids. Biggie, I don't know what it was, but we was writing death at the time, mm. as far as, that's just what our culture was. We was- Manifest, like manifesting. Fuck it, it. we writing, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna live to see him tomorrow. I wrote a song called Murder Was The Case in July of 1993. I remember that shit. And I called a murder case You're on trial? in August. Yeah. Listen to what I just told you. Yeah. I wrote a song called Murder Was the Case in July of 1993, and I caught a murder case in August of 1993. And my record came out November 1993. So it looked like I wrote Murder Was the Case to the shit that uh, happened. Uh, and, it's been, and it's continued too. I mean, you saw it with Juice. You saw it with Mac Miller. Like all, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's actually- it's, 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 the, it's like a manifestation of death in art, but unfortunately it just, it keeps happening. Like. I stop. I stopped I stopped talking about any yeah. sort of <clears throat> death, anything, because things that come out of my mouth like happen. They really do. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I I'm a really really I'm the religious one out of the group, so I read my Bible like every day. But the one thing that sticks with me is 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So when he says, let there be light and we're made in his image, I keep telling people, I'm like, yo, if God made us in his image and he spoke things, we're all made out of vibration. Like that, that is what science sees. Yes. So if you really want to speak into something, like be careful what comes out of your mouth. I truly you speak believe into you existence. call it. Yeah. Yes, you will. You will speak it to existence. That's the gift that God gave us. He gave us that ability to speak it into existence. Amen. One thing you are speaking into uh, existence on a, on a lighter note is, uh, are you going to buy Twitter? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm just fucking with Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, goddamn well I ain't gonna put up no motherfucking billion dollars, no motherfucking yeah. money. But, it, but if he does buy Twitter, we get free internet and airplanes. So it's cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask y'all what, what, cool. what y'all think about what Elon's doing with Twitter and just kind of the the uh, hoops that he's making Jack and everybody jump through, like on that side, because you know he he it looked like he was gonna come out just buy the thing. Then he wants proof on actives. He wants, you know, he wants to keep talking about algorithms. And every time he tweets about the algor algorithm, Jack jumps in and says, that's not what we're trying to do. It's right. wild to watch. What do you guys think about what he's doing? I mean, I think he's wild. We've had a lot of encounters with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the best time, the best, the first time we met Elon, we were, we were at a party in um, South by Southwest that uh, Sound Ventures, Guy O'Seer was having, and we, uh, Snoop was DJing. And, I, and as he was coming off the stage, I said, can you grab Elon and bring him out? So guy grabs Elon, we go backstage, we're hanging out. And there's a moment you can find the photo of Snoop and Elon and we, and we start talking. And in that 30 seconds, man, that was the most awkward, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I've, been, I've been with Snoop and I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of very famous people. This was like missed signals left and right. Like oh, nobody yeah, was catching, right? Those, yeah. it was oh, like, no. Is he socially I, awkward? Or oh, is he yeah. Man, the number one. Number really? One, number I, one in the world. I looked at Elon. I said, I see Elon, what are you up to next? I, I swear, he goes, looked at me, he goes, Irony. What? Me and Snoop look at each other. Oh, cool irony. <laughs> right? And I, and and then and he leaves. Whatever. And I, I I'm not kidding. The next day, Snoop calls me. He's like, "Yo, <laughs> was that Rocket Man?" <laughs> so he didn't even know who Elon Musk no, was. No, we no way. That's yeah. hilarious. So it's crazy. That's so hilarious. now that this photo, like whenever they go back and forth on Twitter, this photo always surfaces. But the but they these guys had they they both were like. You know. I thought Cud was yeah. a robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people still do. Yeah, dude. A lot he might of people be. still he might be. He might yeah. be a drunk. Like, Cud must yeah. be related to Yao Ming. When they made Yao Ming, they made him too. <laughs> um, but, but to your point on that question, though, I think, like, he is, he's having fun. I mean, he, he does what he says what he does. He, you know, he says what's everyone's mind. Whatever he wants. And he's, you know. It, 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 sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great well this but it is America it. you do have the freedom of speech you can yeah. say what you want right yeah, yeah. sometimes you know sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you know, I love seeing you with Kevin Hart man you guys crush it together and by the way sitting next to a comedian that is at his level and still draw more laughter on your end that is so hard to do and you crush it every time thank you boss yeah. well me and kev got a chemistry you know his first you know acting role was in soul plane where we you know the pilot exactly yeah. so oh, yeah, that's right we, we comfortable <laughs> together and at the same time it's like comedy is something that i was always doing i was speaking with my counselor from high school he came to my show in san diego and he was like you know i always knew you was going be something I thought you would be a comedian because you were such a class clown I'm like yeah I'm still a little bit funny you know but I try to make sure that I keep my funny in the right you know spot to where it's needed like to be on the side of Kevin Hart I try to not be funny I try to just be me and let it be funny see some of those kind of relationships make sense but then other ones were surpri more surprising Snoop Dogg Martha Stewart yeah that's like me with your auntie. What's wrong facts, with that? Facts. Facts. She wrong might be that? my aunt. Dude. That's what I'm Straight saying. Up, bro. What's wrong with your auntie having a cool, <laughs> nah. cool player that you're know saying to hang out with? Nah, you know everything's right. Everything's right. <laughs> but, like, how does that happen? You know how, like, that, how that happens? That happen? It happens as Justin Bieber has a roast that we do on Comedy Central. Martha Stewart's sitting right here. I'm sitting right here. And I'm smoking the whole night. And she getting the secondhand smoke. <laughs> and she ends up telling the best fucking jokes out of the night. We end up exchanging numbers, and somebody creates an idea for us to do a show, but it ain't nobody from my team or her team. So we get wind of it, and I'm like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna fly to see you. So I flew out to see her, and I said, we should just put together the idea. So we created the idea, shout it to VH1. They was into it, and then Martha and Snoop's uh, potluck show began, and then from there, 
we just started doing things together, whether it was, you know, lighters, lighters, branding so shit. So now sick. we got wine together. I got our deal with 19 Crime. She got the white wine. I got the red wine. That's so yeah, cool. so you got <laughs> Callie Red and Martha Shard, and you walk into, like, Ralph's or Kroger's, and there they are, you know, two standees, her white wine, his red wine. There's they just something together. to be said about, about you for sure, but both of you guys and your uh, versatility. Like, you could, Snoop can... Honestly, Fit Martha himself Martha is any, Snoop. Like, yeah, you she talk really Martha, is. Yeah, right. say, really but see, that, it's, it's a fifty-fifty <laughs> partnership. It ain't just me. It's like you got to sure. understand. She handles her weight because I learn so much when I'm with her in the kitchen, etiquette-wise, and I learn so much from her business-wise because she's not vocal. So when we doing some shit, say for example, if we shooting a commercial and we sitting there for like two minutes too long, I'd be like, "What the fuck is going on? Let's shoot this <laughs> motherfucking shot." <laughs> and then she may not. She may not agree with what how I said it, but she'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's wild. Their business and their focus, it's the same. Like you talk to them, they have a different way of presenting it, but they have the same, same goal. Ideas, yeah. yeah. Who who who's done more time? Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha right? done yeah. more time Dude, than me, cause she just... she way more gangster than me. <laughs> <laughs> They talked about that in the roast, and that's what I found out. She went yeah. to prison. I was like, yeah. what? And she didn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't That's stitch. why she went to prison, because yeah. she didn't say a word. Damn, six, she certified. Six, she certified. She was in there braiding hair. Uh, she was in there with the homegirls doing tattoos and all kinds of shit. She was in there living her life. <laughs> <laughs> now, her, her, the place she did her sentence was a little lighter than most. <laughs> no, she, nah, she told me, she like, there was some real girls in there. They yeah, taught me yeah. this and this. And I'm like, I'm, come on, you know, I didn't chopped it up with her about <laughs> life behind the wall. That was our first sit down. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. How, how long was she in jail? Shit, what, like, was it 18 a year, more than a year. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she did some time, year. Oh, she's a thug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was like, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic. God. I wish y'all would say something to Martha. What? <laughs> <laughs> she did way more time than all you <laughs> She watches this podcast too, so. <laughs> yeah. Martha. Shout just, out to the homegirl, Martha. You gotta get Martha on. She'll do it. Oh, hey, we would, would love, love that. Yeah. I would have Let's to have her. my mom pop in yeah. for that, for Let's sure. get her. That'd be sick. So what's next? Where are you going? Uh, Can I say? Nah. No, no, well, no, no. Well, I guess getting ready for New York for, I mean, you got obviously back in the road touring like crazy. But I can't say where I'm going tomorrow, huh? No. Uh-uh. That's You'll so motherfucking soon. gangster. Wait, could you say we beep it out and we won't put it in? But no, we'll, no, no, because we'll it's, it's going live on Tuesday. No, it's not going live for, for, for a minute. Oh. Let's go live. You know, this man's always doing uh, something, right? So uh, I mean, this, this, hey, this that's why I'm shit. curious. Like, we're gonna, hey, we'll, some, we'll, is, we'll double back with that one. I may whisper in your ear when we go off air. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah, need yeah. your help. When I go off it. air, I whisper in your ear just so you know when I come oh, back, yeah. we'll, we'll drop it over here. I bet. It's big. Yeah. Like I got alpha. Sick. It's motherfucking yeah. big. Sick. You hear me? What's your product? What product can we do together? This. What's the What's the collab? Prime. Oh, holy shit. We ain't got no energy drink. Hydration. Hydration. But, but, we might be branching into energy in the future. Yeah. In which case, that But could I be mean, cool. hydrate. I like that. See, high. High, high, high. He's a marketing genius. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm high, I need to drate. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. We got to get creative. I mean, look, the boxing is also like. Yeah. Like an easy takeaway. Are you going dog? That to was fight? the night when, when he well, came out. You know, you know dog. Man, I will no, I know. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, you know they sent me some punk motherfucker. They want me to fight some of the guys. He got his ass beat. They, Lamar Odom whipped the dog shit out of. Oh, him. oh, they wanted you to fight Aaron Carter. I'm like, cuz I will. Nah, whoop nah. This you seat. know what the fight is? Who? Hundred percent. Big money makes all the sense in the world. Him versus Wiz. I knew you was gonna Him say that. Him versus Wiz. Hold on. Bro. Time out. Time out. Time out. Me versus Wiz Khalifa. Time out. Time out. First of all. That's my little homie, right? And he's way more skillful <laughs> in that motherfucking fights, ring than me. Fights, Let yeah, me tell you yeah. this. He the reason why I started Got going it. to the gym, right? Uh, and when we first started going, I was bigger than him. He's so much bigger than me, faster yeah. than me, sharper than me. I ain't fighting that nigga. <laughs> no he's a great way. bowler. Have you ever seen him bowl? No. Bowler fighter. Man, you see the way that nigga kick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because his oh, legs are seven feet long. Yeah, yeah. It's fit. Shit, I don't know how to defend that shit yet. Yeah. I can get down a little bit, but nigga talking about kicking and shit? Yeah. Oh, no. Nah. I will say the fight, <laughs> fight night, the first, the J- Jake's first fight with Nate, yeah. that was magic, man. When you, when you walked in the room, 
It was mid. It was early COVID. Everything was shut down. You couldn't move. Oh we slide yeah. In. They put him on. They put him up there. And it was you. What Sugar Ray, Israel Adeo. They was, had all of the big time uh, uh, announcers up there. All, and he's he's. You could tell. You were like, this is. I didn't expect this to happen because it wasn't planned. Jim Gray was there Jim too. Gray. Me and Jim Gray fell in love. He yeah. became my dog after that night. We were in the studio. We had been in the studio the night before. Got the phone call with Snoop. Do this. I told him. He said, What? Oh, Sugar that quickly. Ray? Yeah. Walks in the oh, next day. Damn. We come in. We sit down. He gets on there. And that thing was just magic. I mean, I, I let we left that room that night. It was like the media was crazy. Jake like, said. Jake said because it, it was during COVID and yeah. there wasn't a crowd. Yeah. He said the, it was so like awkwardly quiet yeah. and the punches were so loud. Like he could hear you commenting. <laughs> and you guys remember his commentary during that fight? He goes, "Oh dear lord!" <laughs> oh, he was the favorite part of the whole. The best thing. part yeah, yeah. of the whole. Thing. That was so crazy. I don't. I think. Look, if it wasn't for the the everybody, you know. Congrats, but it wasn't for the Jake knockout and his his narration. That that thing became historic. No, I yeah. agree. Agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is part of history, baby. Yeah, there's a lot of meat on that bone. Dog with the paw. No, it. for real, bro. So cool. Now you've had a you had an illustrious career, and it's always fascinating to see what you do next. And like the memes on Twitter. You know what? I, I growing up when you did the uh, the song with Katy Perry, California Girls. Mm. <laughs> it's it's like uh, I don't know how how much you had broken into like pop before that. But California girls fucking hit, Science. and that's that's when I was I was young. But it was my first indicator that this guy is this guy's not afraid to like go outside. Look, look how I got on that song. She reached out to me, called my peoples, right, and she was like, "I want I want you on this song with me," because she was tired of hearing the Jay Z, Alicia Keys song, New York, uh, New York, and uh, she was like, "This song, oh, this, really? I hear it everywhere. We got to make something for California, not like hating, but just like." We got to represent yeah, where yeah, we from because yeah, this yeah, song is fucking amazing. Yeah. This shit is amazing. New York, New York. Everybody's singing New York. Yeah. She's like, we need one. I'm like, all right, cool. What's happening? Where you want me to come? Meet me at the studio. I come in the studio. And she got a motherfucking dick shrine. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I'm uh, sorry. I can't one make this time. shit one up. One more time. A dick shrine, nigga. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> a black dick shrine. When I walk in the studio, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Was your Polaroid there by any chance? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you made but it back. I guess she was, I don't know what it was, but it was just, it was a vibe. And I wasn't trying to get at her. She wasn't trying to get at me. It was just the motherfucker was there. I'm like, okay, I guess she just like black dicks in the studio. <laughs> I don't know. I put the music on. You know, I do my thing. Whoop, 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 boom, boom, knock it out. Love the song. So now she like the video. Cool, no problem. When we doing the video, we doing it here. I pull up to the video shoot. They like, Katie want to holler at you. She on set. No problem. I go on set. She butt naked laying on the On the clouds. On, uh, yeah. On the clouds. No fucking way. I'm like, hey, Snoop. I'm like, well, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen a dick shrine and you naked. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't figure this shit. Let's get this video over with. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're Wait, still, you never I, asked her about the dick. I, I, I would have, I would have maybe capitalized on that a little bit. There was, you didn't, you didn't want to. Did she like candles on it? Was she like bowing to it? Like what? <laughs> like what the fuck, man? No, I gotta no, know just, about this shit. It was just sitting in the corner. That motherfucker was. It had candles around it, and it was just there, like, <laughs> like the Mother Teresa. Right. Just imagine that if you go to somebody's house and you see the Mother Teresa sitting up there on the mantel, and you'd be like, you know. Hers that just that a was BBC. up there just like, but like bam. BBC. Like. It led to a hit record. Might be something to it. I mean, know? maybe that's her style. She obviously knows what she's doing. Black dicks yeah. everywhere with lighters. <laughs> Don't try this at home, y'all. <laughs> You're still doing crossovers, too. You got, you got, you're working on some shit with Aoki? With Steve Aoki? Yeah, we got a project. It's called Alpha Dogs. Um, his name is uh, Professor Disco, and my character is Dr. Bombay. So it's our board apes on a project that we got coming out on Gala Music. Sick, dude. Sick. Well, we, yeah, we we definitely got to do some shit together. Come on, we'll let's do it, it. Prime high, high, hydrate is Come on, there's man. meat on that. Hydrate. Boat. Like a like a cannabis infused. I don't know what it is. I'm not in that space right now, man. Come on, man, take me off the market. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, someone's That's going what I'm to. Saying. Someone's going. You do have a you do have a cannabis company though. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's it called? V. We got uh, Uncle Snoop's. That's my brand. That's Where's it sold? Right? It ain't, it ain't out yet. It's coming in about a month. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You got like strains picked out and all that shit? I got Dr. Bond Bay and Champ Medici. That's coming out. They got all oh, those are the strains? Two, or three days those are two of the strains? We got the Board 8th strain out right now. It's nice. called Board 8th. 
Nice. I love that. <laughs> oh shit! It actually sold out. I, I did a partnership with Cookies and, and Backpack Boys. It sold out the first week. So you know, I used the IP of my my board ape Smart. and put it in the front of the, the the weed bag, and it sold out the first week. You got one too? You got an ape as well? Yeah, I bought one in March, March first for ninety nine ETH. Yeah, I just bought so one. I, just, I, I got I it right before too. the ape coins Smart. and all that shit, so it was Sick. perfect. So you got your I got point. my bread right back. Fire. <laughs> you know, Fire. we did the collab. We've been making singles. You know, we Sick, just monetizing man. off the IP. Yeah. We just had Sasha Banks on the show. That's our cousin, Mercedes I Bernardo. I can't believe that shit. Yeah, that's she's our cousin. Right she's here. Her right before you guys. She's here. Yeah. She's so she's so cool, bro. She's always trending on Twitter. She every week. I yeah, swear to God, every, every I told week, him that. Week. I'd be like, "Yo, she popping." Yeah, she is. You should just send her bloodline. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> she said the same thing. We said <laughs> you're doing you're doing her project, right? You're working with her on her uh, NFTs. <clears throat> I don't want to say too much, but you know, we helping her with Web three investments. Got and, it. Got and, it. You know, trying to expand her portfolio. Sick, bro. All right, well, we got the wrap up. We got oh, the we got the they did this shit. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, the yeah, yeah, look yeah. at him. Look, 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 let me show you. What you <laughs> 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 well, dude, we appreciate you guys coming on impulsive, man. For real, I know what that look mean. That means mm. mama on her way. My mama coming. <laughs> Don't even clean up, just leave. <laughs> cool, Nick, Champ, Snoop, man. It's been an honor. Uh, uh, yeah, pleasure. anything, anything uh, you guys want to make sure the audience keeps an eye out for. I mean, you're doing a lot. You, you, you'll fucking see him. Right. <laughs> follow him on it. Follow him on Instagram. You'll fucking see him. Yeah. Shout out Kifa. Right. Shout out Kifa for Shout making out this Kifa. happen, y'all. Appreciate you, Kifa. Hey, wherever you see this Dr. Bombay logo, go get it because it's everywhere and it's everything. It's ice cream. It's apparel. It's kids' clothes. It's everything that you could imagine. Dr. Bombay coming to a hood near you. Big facts. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We love you. We'll see you next time. Take it easy, fam. Peace. Peace. Peace.